James Kaufman, World News Report Today. Today is July 22nd, 2023, 11.30 a.m. Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. We currently have reports in from NOAA and NASA that we've had another strong M-flare that looks like it was basically Earth-facing. NOAA calls it an M-3.16, where NASA calls it an M-3.1. Sounds like about the same flare here. This occurred right at 5.30 UTC time, or at least it peaked about that time. This flare managed to stay in the M territory for just about one hour time period, which is a decent period M flare. NASA reports a C9 flare after that. I'm guessing because the time reported is this hiccup right here on the chart, which looks like a continuation from the M flare to me, followed by a C9. 7.1 according to NASA here we have a 7.11 according to NOAA so they're all right on with each other so we've had basically three flares all out of the same sunspot let's take a look at that sunspot right now now all three of those flares were generated from sunspot AR3372 right here this does appear to be earth facing and any explosion would, in fact, most probably have an Earth component associated with it. What everyone needs to see here is these sunspots, all of them, are becoming more complex as they move towards the western, not eastern limb here, and are actually facing the gas giants that Earth is orbiting in front of shortly. So these sunspots, they're so complex and firing off the western limb will be earth facing very soon as earth moves into that position so let's all make sure we're prepared for a large solar flare and associated chrome mass ejection because that is exactly what we're heading into heading over to our d region absorption prediction center this is only the last flare the c 7.11 solar flare that popped off over Africa and Western Europe. We're running a C2 plus baseline and have been for months now. So we're constantly getting radiation spewed at Earth all day long, every day, all night long, every night. The other two flares happen before the data is available here overnight. Over to STO 190 three angstroms so we're going to be able to see all these explosions and we're going to be seeing an impact on the satellite itself see if we can watch this there's the first one the larger one right there's the impact i'm going to actually take us through this by hand here there's the first explosion there's the second explosion while we get the impact on STO from the first explosion we're back on and it should take us right to that last well we don't quite make it but we see the first two explosions for sure which are really all one big explosion the M flare and the follow-up C9 flare so y'all can see it happen right there and as the second one happens, the first one impacts SDO. We're getting some slightly different information here at Space Weather Live, which usually goes right to NASA. They have AR3372, which is only a beta class complexity, believe it or not, expelling the first M3.1 flare and then the C7.1 flare, which was much later in the day. They actually have a different sunspot expelling the small M flare or strong C flare, depending on who calls it out. Looks like NASA has called out region AR3373, which is trailing 72, as the source of the M.9 
or as Noah called it, the C9.95. I will show you all where the second sunspot is. And we'll actually look at a coronal mass ejection that was created. Now, believe it or not, even with the M3.1 solar flare, all of the sunspots on the sun are either alpha or beta. There's no complexity according to NASA and NOAA, to any of these sunspots. According to NASA, AR3373 is going to be responsible for the 0.09M flare, or as NOAA called it, the 9.95C flare that occurred just after the M3.1 flare that popped off of 3372. We will jump back and see if we can see that occur. I may disagree with them and may think that it occurred from 3372 based on what we just saw on STO. So let's take a quick look at that. All right, heading back to STO. I'm going to pull us through it very slowly. You can see that first explosion up there. And then we, in fact, do see a second explosion out of AR3373. Just as they called, although the explosion from AR3372 seems to correspond directly with the timing that we see the explosion come out of the AR3373. And then there is this strange impact. And then we're back in action here. No real time missing. But I want to make sure that everyone saw the big explosion to the north, then that explosion out of 7-3 right there. Although the other sunspot, AR-3372, continues its solar flare through that entire period and even further. So my guess is, and it's just a guess at this point, that both of the stronger solar flares came from ar 3372, although again, NASA says that this was responsible for the, what they call, M.09 flare, and what NOAA calls the C9.95 solar flare. So this is up for debate. Both would have an Earth component associated with them. All right, the big flare was supposed to occur at around 3.30 UTC time. We don't see anything, but we do start to see something about three hours later. It looks like a very large explosion coming out of the 3 o'clock position of our star here. As y'all can see, it does look like a single coronal mass ejection. And that is all we're able to see on Lasco C3, although it covers all the time in question. So with that said, we had a strong M3.16, 3.1 solar flare. They said that it was followed by a C9.95, whereas NASA said it was followed by an M0.9. And it does look like it went over the M flare boundary there. And that was all followed by this C7.1 solar flare just before or just after 11 UTC time. God bless you guys. Share, subscribe, and always remember, anything is possible in Bizarro World.